thank you everyone for not only uh, being here to listen to the panel, uh, but also thank you very much for all of our fantastic panellists for taking the time to talk about what is a really important topic. Um, we often talk about digital mining, creating you know, digital diff different twins, different types of uh, ways of approaching mining. But often we don't talk about, well, what is the capability build required to actually make this happen? So this is the topic that uh, the, uh, the panel and I are going to be discussing this morning. Um, now, I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves. Um, so, George, I'm going to start with you. If you would like to uh, just give us a little bit about uh, you, your role, and uh, your take on this topic. Uh, yeah, good morning, everyone. My name's George Spink. I'm the Executive General Manager for Dakota. Uh, Dakota is a relatively new business coming into the market. We were incubated underneath Hastings during a Caterpillar dealership. Uh, we've now launched on our own, focusing on helping mining customers be more productive through the use of uh, digital analytics and, and the associated technology. Uh, from my perspective, Michelle, the, uh, what I see is technology is fantastic, but it's, it's bringing the humans along. It's how you actually um, help them collaborate. Um, sometimes they can be a bit fearful of some of the things they're seeing in analytics because it's maybe telling what's really happening on site versus what, what may they may be communicating up the line. And so it's helping them trust what they're seeing in the data, trusting that if you're making decisions through algorithms and the like, how you can make improvements and, and taking that, that learning from algorithms and digital twins into the actual operations and helping them make that transition from uh, fact, if you like, based on data versus what they're sort of seeing yeah. through the human eye. Yeah, that's a great point, George. And we're going to dig down into that trust element uh, a little bit in a second. Emily. Hello everyone, uh, Emily Disson from uh, Capgemini. I lead Capgemini's intelligent industry capability in our strategic consulting group, Invent. Um, Capgemini is an end-to-end -end strategic consulting digital transformation and systems implementation business, but I think what's really interesting about us is that we have come at the lens both from an IT and an OT perspective. We have 150,000 engineers within our teams globally and um, that's a big part of the role that we play in the industry. Um, thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you. So, <laughs> there we go, you can hear me now. Um, and so, I mean, I think that this is a really interesting conversation because fundamentally the technologies exist that mining companies need to be using. It is really around how those technologies come together. That's very much, you know, relating to interoperability and yeah. um, what, what those, that data integration needs to be, but also what the operating models are and um, the, the approaches that need to come together. One of my big bugbears is how we bring together expertise. We're very siloed in mining, so how we bring together expertise across IT and um, data science, um, SMEs from different parts of production and operations to really get that yeah. change. Yeah, absolutely. Jerome. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, Jérôme Val from uh, Dassault System. Um, most of you must know our organization, but uh, uh, how to summarize Dassault? We've been uh, very passionate about uh, sustainability for over 10 years now. It has been our driving, driving uh, motivation across 11 industries. And uh, today, uh, we are looking at uh, bringing all our experience across all these different industries, from aerospace, defense, healthcare, into mining. And we do that through uh, the virtualization, uh, virtualization of process, virtualization of project, virtualization of capabilities, uh, to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to uh, anticipate uh, the risk. And as a consequence, to uh, play scenarios across uh, all aspects of the operations uh, and uh, ultimately uh, shrink uh, time to delivery compress them to delivery and uh, uh, deliver a more sustainable project. Um, we have a lot of very broad topics, so I really look forward yeah. to, uh, to talk to the team on uh, the different topic. Thank you very much. Excellent. So Simon. Thank you. Um, my name is Simon Wyakorn. I'm the APAC Regional Vice President um, here in APAC for Nutrax. Um, Nutrax is a um, wholly owned business unit of Sandvik, um, and within Sandvik we sit in the Digital Mining Technologies Division, um, alongside Automation and now Deswick, that's just just joined the family, which is pretty pretty awesome. Um, so, I've been in the mining industry for about 15 years, supporting 
deployment and adoption of digital technologies across really the whole value chain. Um, and, and as I see it, the, the early stages of you know, exploration, geological modeling, mine design, um, scheduling, um, those sectors, those, those, those value, value chain sectors, um, have, have wholesale adopted digitalization um, and, and are very competent in it. Um, I think the challenge now is really in operations um, and, and we specialize and 95% and of our business is underground, um, underground hard rock specifically. Um, and the challenge is in the operational space um, and, and that environment is, is complex and difficult um, from, a, from a, an, a true environmental perspective, perspective it's dangerous. Um, um, networking facilities are a challenge, which is a hindrance to digitalization and connectivity, um, which then has ongoing impacts to the value that can be delivered by digitalization. Um, but then also I think the sort of unknown and unspoken about challenge is the operating model within a lot of mines in Australia um, and more and more in North America and, and Africa. And that's really the sort of the contract um, owner operator models and, and how that is impacting the uptake of digitalization and digital platforms um, because it's about who gets the value associated with the investment. Um, and there's a there's a, there's a struggle there. Um, there's a struggle in terms of where the contract boundaries sit and therefore uh, the investment could, for example, come from the mine site and yet the contractor is going to get the value and the benefit and then how does that flow back to the mine owner again? So I think there's a lot of challenge there and I think that's slowing down the adoption. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Joe. Yeah, my name is Joe Braun. I'm with ABB. Um, yeah, in my view, digitalization is a fantastic opportunity and, and an enabler uh, to tackle a lot of the challenges which have been discussed during this conference. Sustainability, um, the changing workforce, um, things like um, more diversity in the mining industry. Uh, so all of that, in my view, is critically enabled by digitalization. Uh, so I think the question is not if you do it, but how. Uh, and what it, does it mean? And that is what we're going to discuss here. Um, I think it will change uh, very much the way um, miners will operate, uh, for sure. Um, I think in the end it will create more attractive workplaces. It will give us way more opportunities um, in how we can optimize processes, work across mines, uh, create more attractive work environments. And uh, what, I, what I hear time and time again, and ultimately then to attract the best talent uh, to this particular industry. Mm. Excellent, thank you. And Baz? Yeah, my name is uh, Baz. Um, I lead the uh, global strategy and technology uh, direction for Schneider Electric for mining minerals metals. And uh, I'm very lucky to work uh, externally with all our clients, taking input on what it takes to digitize as well as uh, translating internally to all the lines of businesses and offers bringing together new solutions and decarbonization pathways for our clients. So if it comes to green mining, green steel, green glass and cement. Um, so uh, that means obviously a lot of change internally uh, for salespeople, for delivery people, solution architects, etc. right? And we're leading that change uh, from, from both ends, right? And, and taking input from clients to also the marketing and intelligence functions. So that's my role. Excellent. So there seems to be a couple of really interesting threads that are common amongst uh, some of the things that all of you have said. The, the one is around how do we change our, the way we go about doing things, you know, the behaviours that we see, whether it be, you know, in our operators, as, as leaders, the way we approach things. Um, so, you know, whether it's trust or whether it's about how we think about risk. Um, and then there's the other really interesting thread is around a change in operating model or a change in business models and the tensions that that's potentially creating at the moment and where potentially that could go to. So I'm going to dig down into a couple of those for a little while. Um, so let's just start with the operating model because I think that's a really interesting one. So Emily, where do you think, 
or, or what do you think the changes that are the digital will drive in the operating models and the relationships therefore between the different uh, parts of the mining industry mining you know companies suppliers um, you know even governments communities etc how do you see that playing out and what are the tensions uh, there are so many tensions <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing thank you for that question Michelle um, I, look I think this is a journey that we've been on for um, some, like a long time. Um, and there's so many layers to it. You know, fundamentally how mining companies interact with suppliers and the change that needs to happen to really enable the value to be mm. uncovered in that. And there's a nuance in how you do that. Yep. Um, then the, the, how the acceleration of innovation around mining companies and the ecosystem. And I think mm. we've made, in the last five years, we've made a lot of progress to create that ecosystem around mining companies. But, say, suddenly in Australia, there is so much potential to, um, to really enliven that ecosystem of innovation mm. and um, I've certainly drive far more commercialisation, but also um, have... Uh, just a, lot, a, a more dynamic um, creation that mining companies engage in mm. um, in relation to that. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, one of the core parts to that, you know, we talk about operating model and there's the ecosystem, but one of the really important things I think about operating model from a mining company perspective is the way that roles come together. Yeah. and the way that roles are defined and not, you know, and digitisation has a huge impact as you digitisation, mm -hmm. uh, digitise across the value chain, the way that those roles need to really be see into each of the kind of, um, mm. the previous and the follow on parts of that value chain as a part of what that, fundamentally what that transformation is. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think there's a few threads there. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, you raise a couple of really interesting points because I know, you know, having done a couple of digital transformations in organisations before, it does fundamentally change the role of different people within the organisation. And sometimes, to your point, George, about trust, that can create some real anxiety because my role is now different. And especially if you're not, as the, per, as the per personal people or team rolling that out, not being cognitive, uh, cognitive of that. Um, and then, you know, I think the other point that you raise, which is really interesting, is around the relationships um, and how do we build that ecosystem? Because I think, you know, most people nod when we say, you know, no one of us can solve these problems individually. It's going to take a whole team or community uh, in order to solve some of these problems. But the, the challenge is how do you bring that disparate views and thoughts together um, and I think that was one of the things that you were talking about. Uh, so do you want to expand on, you know, how do you bring people with dis or organisations with disparate drivers together to the table to have some of these conversations? Yeah, like... Hello? I'm not sure I'm... You back on? No. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it, it's, it's a complex question. Um, because there are so many different um, stakeholders mm. in, in, in play um, and they have um, vested interests and agendas yep. um, and objectives for, for themselves, whether that's within an organisation, within an operation or within mm. the entire ecosystem. Um, so it's a difficult thing to do, but as a, if, if you take it from the, the mining company's perspective, um, then I think the operating model and the digital system needs to be aligned mm. um, and and sometimes we don't see that um, mm. and, and it makes sense because it's evolving um, but then if you can and if a mining company can um, visualize the digital system overlay the digital or the operating model and then see how the the, the longer term objectives can be achieved mm. even though there's some shorter term pain mm. um, and, and those shorter term pains, you know, almost have to be absorbed by the mining company to get to the end goal. Mm. Um, and I think if, if there's that perspective, and that's difficult because, you know, we're all financial year driven and investment cycles, yeah. um, but the, in a way that the, the, the longer term vision needs to be the thing that people are focusing on. Yeah. Um, and then you know, and we, as I said, we, we, we specialise in just in operations, 
we've come back now towards the early stages, but in terms of that operation space, um, to, bring, to bring those operational people along, mm. um, you really need to deliver value to what they do each day yep. um, and, and not make them think that this journey's hard yeah. and I'm not getting anything and if it keeps going, I might actually lose my job. Yeah. So I think there's a bit of that going on as well. Yeah, and I look, they, they seem to be some of those tensions that we have to hold almost simultaneously is this tension around how do you describe the longer term because, you know, automation, for example, and digitisation is changing the role of a mining company. We're much more integrators. We may not do a lot of the doing ourselves. Changing the role of contractors, you know, as, uh, as we automate more and more, how does that change the role of a contractor and how do they add value? Um, changes the role of OEMs. You know, they used to sell uh, metal to us and now they're selling very sophisticated machines that last a long time and more data. Um, but at the same time, you're holding that tension around how do we add value right now? Because that's what an investor wants, that's maybe what a community member wants, that's definitely what an, an operator or a maintainer wants, is what's the value to me now? And I'm, George, I'm going to throw to you because you threw out that sort of trust and how we actually bring uh, people along with us and build that capability. Um, so what are your thoughts on how we build the capability to, to bring the workforce with us? Well, I think I'll go back to what I said there is that the ability to visualise a value chain and actually show people how the value chain is performing. So typically I see in the verticals, you know, people are very focused on their KPIs or their particular area and they may have done the best they can to improve it and they feel like they're doing the right job, but then suddenly someone points out to them, well, you're impacting up and down the value stream, as mentioned. And that to me is one of the, the big challenges is, and the words have been used fairly freely, but collaboration, communication, well, I think they're actually very important to mm. help people understand that whilst they're doing a good job in their particular area, the ability to look left and right, and the technology and, and the data and the visualisation of that now allows us to do that. You know, it wasn't that long ago, it was a bit hard, but now things are instrumented, they're connected, the data flows pretty freely, and you now have the power to actually show them all the decisions you're making, whilst they're good in your vertical, they're actually impacting the process plant. Yeah. Now that's a big change, and that's when you see people um, fearful of, well, I'm doing a good job, I don't want to be criticised, but at the same time you're saying, no, no, for the greater good, to your point, we're trying to make the, mm. an outcome for the, whether it be the mining company or the community, you can actually show them how the small trade-offs they can do and still be rewarded, actually Im improve the overall system. So. We very much encourage a systems uh, thinking approach where we, we help the v various verticals work together, understand that they may actually have to, maybe not the best performing because the overall value chain um, needs them to be at a certain level for others to perform better. So trying to show them, visualise them, and that requires a lot of communication and, and we find you have to challenge the, I guess the tribal norms that have been built up over a number of years and you show them now through data and say, look, no, here's a better way to work, and that takes a while for them to get used to that new way of working. So it's, it's trusting the data, trusting how it plays out on site, and not being critical, but actually trying to bring them through on that, on that journey. So a lot of communication yeah. collaboration is what I'm trying to say, Michelle, in, in yeah. simple terms. And yeah. understanding how their colleagues are also impacted by some of their decisions. Yeah, so it sounds like there's a lot of similarity in a lot of ways of how you might deal with a, an individual or a person versus the way you were describing, Simon, about how we would deal with organisations and it sort of seems to start with having some of those hard conversations, putting some of that stuff on the table. You know, we may not like it, it may be sort of uncomfortable or icky, but at least then we can start having that conversation and start teasing out the differences of views, the differences of opinions, uh, et cetera. So, so Jerome, you were talking about, and it you know, sort of links back to risk, because again, you know, it's a risk of not implementing, the, you know, how do we deal with risks at board or, or management level to move some of their capability? How do we think about the risk between different organisations? Um, and Jerome, you spoke about risk earlier, but so how do we drive that capability build to, to really think about risk differently and to, uh, to, to um, make people feel more comfortable with some of the, the futures that we're describing or we're trying to achieve in uh, digital? Well, first of all, I really like uh, the thinking approach, uh, the model think thinking approach. Yeah. Uh, every single organization out there uh, have a fair share of engineers. And I think the mining industry is, uh, is one of the industries that got uh, more engineers to the square meter than any other type of industry out there. 
And what we're seeing uh, worldwide in manufacturing, healthcare, life science, banking, is uh, an adoption of these engineering concepts uh, that we call model-based system engineering, uh, implemented as part of the organization to not anymore just put a plan in place, deploy it, and see if it works. Uh, we are advanced enough and technical enough nowadays to be able to start testing these type of scenarios. And we're starting to do, to see a lot and working a lot with this, uh, these industries to implement this th system thinking approach for executive to be able to test different scenarios, for executive to be able to validate their assumptions and their strategies to in restructuring the organization and through the process, involving the key stakeholders and uh, uh, making them a full element of the decision-making process in how they, will, they wish to restructure the organization. Um, and this thinking approach is not only within the organization, it affects the entire ecosystem, the suppliers, uh, the uh, uh, um, communities, uh, the government, the uh, legislator. And as long as we don't have uh, as long as we don't take the luxury to take the time to anticipate, to plan in a way that is structured and, uh, uh, how do we say, uh, 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 um, uh, um, uh, pragmatic mm. for the long term, we're still going to keep facing the challenges of the three-year timeline uh, <laughs> and we keep, we keep going to be facing the challenges of Oh, we didn't see that coming, but well, what is the new plan to resolve this issue? Mm. That's my take. Yeah. And uh, Joe, I mean, I know ABB, so picking up on some of those, thinking about transformation, thinking about different um, business models, et cetera, and I know that ABB has been you know, quite um, forward thinking in terms of reimagining themselves, rethinking um, their business model, building quite a significant ecosystem. Um, so how do all those sorts of things play into or, or how do we build those sorts of capabilities um, within our uh, organisations? Because that sort of seems to be helping moving more rapidly along that digital uh, transformation pathway. Yeah, in my experience, it's uh, of utmost importance that uh, we come to a more collaborative spirit. I, th I mm. think several speakers already alluded to this. If we look at... Um, the challenges ahead of us as really centennial changes. I mean, not the day-to-day -day challenges, but really something which will change um, the industry for, for years to come. Um, I think we have to be humble enough to understand, okay, no one will have all of the capability uh, in his or her own organization. Um, so I think we have to find together. We have to basically find together um, as, a, as a collaborative team, as a collaborative ecosystem, I like that term, um, so everyone contribu contributes towards a set goal. Mm -hmm. And I, I have seen very powerful models where typically um, it is then the end users who are forging these relationships. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, some of the other players in the ecosystem might be a little bit hesitant. Uh, they're still dreaming about proprietary solutions, <laughs> keeping others out, um, and it doesn't work this way. Yeah. I mean, this is not business as usual. Yeah. And um, forging those relationships, working towards really clear expectations, what's coming out of this, um, and getting the best and the brightest around the table. And I guess once, once we have charted the way, I mean, we can fall back into our um, you know, typical competitive behavior again. But for the time being, and, and I mean, we have done this now with a couple of players and we have been part of some of these end user driven mm -hmm. initiatives and we have seen extremely powerful things coming out of this. So, so my pledge is really, let's collaborate to, to, to get a grip on these challenges. Yeah. Um, and uh, before we haven't really seen the result and, and where things are going, uh, we should really maintain a, this, this, this collaborative spirit. Yeah, and I, look, I, re I think you really hit on a couple of really important topics, I think not just for our industry, but for industry and mankind in general, which is, you know, I think if we look back 30 years, to be successful in business, you could put a fence around the stuff that you own, that, that you control, and this 
could have always been an illusion of control, but the illusion of control was much easier to manage. Less complexity, we could, we could buy things, we could you know, hold on to customers um, and, and, and lock them in. Um, we didn't have to work with others so much. We could just sort of you know, build our own or integrate with them somehow. Um, but one of the things I think that's really exciting about the ubiquitous now nature of, of digital technologies is that they're starting to break down those walls. You, you cannot put your arm around everything anymore. You can't own a space. And so I think one of the really interesting things is that transition from, you know, claiming, owning, locking up IP, you know, which mining companies have done to our shame, I think. Um, you know, you need to protect IP, but that's very different from locking it up. Um, you know, arguing about IP and who owns what rather than, you know, making sure that we've got the outcomes and this fluidity. And I think it's this, this fluidity and this need to collaborate and, and working in a much more uncertain environment, but moving fast across the space and using speed instead and, and great um, collections of ideas and integration of ideas that is how you win now, whether it be in business or, you know, arguably in life, etc., than this locking in sort of situation. And I think that's a really important transition uh, that you've alluded to and a capability that we all have to build because that's a much more complex capability. Um, you know, we, we won't know everything. We have to be more humble. We have to work with others. Um, and from a technology perspective, and I know having worked uh, with Dassault, et cetera, that is a challenge from a technology perspective even. You know, how do you share things, et cetera. Um, so I'm going to, Baz, I'm going to throw you a really curveball. So uh, in terms of uh, um, Schneider and things, how do you guys work and build ecosystems and, and break down those you know, discussions that are going to start with IP and ownership and get it focused on solution and speed? I love this topic. Um, so uh, I think about this in long, medium, and short term. And so the long term is that operating model we started to discuss, right? The medium term is the business model mm -hmm. that we need to both, you know, size or three sides, eh? tri-party mm -hmm. or even more parties, yeah. right? Uh, have a win and have a go at things, right? Which is really something that materializes things, that shows the challenge we have together, yeah. has it on the table, that you can pull apart, that you can say what, what team is actually able to do this new thing that we're trying mm -hmm. to do whose ownership is in it, whose yep. uh, partnership is in that, right? So I feel it's operating model, which is then what I would call strategy, right? The, uh, let's say, uh, next step is the business model that is the most important discussion. Uh, and then there is opportunity, because without opportunity, there is no driver to apply that business model, and it dies. Mm -hmm. Especially with partnerships, right? If they don't get current, yeah. they die out and the relationship you know, evaporates, yeah. right? So uh, most of my time is used in setting those business models, mm. uh, looking at the A-team around the world, because we have lots of different competencies, uh, competencies uh, lots of business line, uh, lines of business with lots of equipment, technology, then Aviva, software, etc. Mm. right? So to set a business model that clients and OEMs, like you mentioned, can live with, that is a model for them and for us, right, is what we try to do. Uh, as a result, maybe 40 to 60% on average of our revenue is done through partnerships. Mm -hmm. And that shows that we're doing this, right? Yeah. And so we always want to be better at this, but we're definitely doing this all day, every day, and get better at it, right? Yeah. But it's still challenging, it's still people work, and it also, there's always missing skills. Also, that's why we always look outside, mm -hmm. and we have this innovation at the Edge team that looks at everything else missing to inform our whole you know, model uh, and our technology stack and everything else. Yeah. So, th so I mean, that's another really interesting point in terms of, um, uh, you know, one of the things I think we struggle with in, in our own organizations is really looking critically at our organization and going, what are our strengths? What are we really good at? And let's build on that. And therefore, the flip side, which is the bit we most probably really don't like thinking about, which is what are we not good at, therefore, and need to either you know, build or partner or whatever it might be. Um, because it, you know, it almost like feels like it's admitting defeat or admitting a mistake. Or, um, so, so how do you go, you know, like how do you have the humility and the ability to really look 
introspectively, either as a, as a human at yourself or at your team or at your organisation if you're at that executive level, and go, you know, this is what we're great at, this is what we really need to build, um, and this is how we're going to go about doing it. Because I, you know, I, I'm in a lot of these conversations where people sort of go, wow, you know, we really need to build this particular capability to be good at digital, or we need to be more agile, and, you know, it's almost like we go, well, we, we, can, we can name some of these things, but it's almost like we're not changing fundamentally the way we then uh, build our business, go about doing things, partner, whatever it might be, because we're never going to be good at everything. You know, I've come to the, that as a realisation after 50 years on this planet. Um, so, Emily, how, what's your thoughts about how do we really get serious about that and then take action? So it's a bit of a glib consulting answer, but, <laughs> oh, no. but you know, really, I think everything has to start with what the objectives are that you're trying to achieve, right? Like, what does the business actually want to be? And I think as we go into the energy transition, that's fundamentally shifting. And it's shifting much faster than we anticipated. If we look back two years ago, you know, there was not an anticipation. You know, I think I was talking to someone from Rio Tinto about lithium strategy. And it's like, you know, two or three years ago, we just did not have the visibility of how much this would change how quickly, right? Yeah. So, and that, that's changing what those objectives are. And then, so I think, you know, um, really putting good front end time into what are those business objectives, how does that map through to the outcomes at a road mapping level that the business wants to achieve and the technology capabilities you need. I think also one of the interesting things through COVID that the need to, for everything to be virtual highlighted was how important the foundations of all of this are. And so being able to have like the right foundations from a connectivity perspective, from a data governance perspective, particularly into operations, because mm -hmm. I think the enterprise has always been reasonably well ordered that way, but you know, data um, and, the, and the foundations that enable you know, what the intelligence and automation um, and control is that we're trying to enable fundamentally, um, you know, that requires incredibly foundational strength to yeah. be built off. Yeah, and it, uh, I think that's, sort of, you know, especially the um, build, making sure that we have those foundations really strong, um, because as we build new things on top of it, whether it's virtualization or whatever, it, right? you know, it's, it's like that bedrock, um, absolutely. And data governance is, uh, is definitely one of those on the, uh, on the list. Um, George, what about uh, your thoughts in terms of how do we get serious about recognising those capabilities or those areas that we're maybe not so strong, um, you know, whether it be when we're implementing a technology or, um, and then how do we take action on building the uh, capability there all? Yeah, well for Dakota, we're, we're new and small, so we've had to realise what we can and can't do. Yeah. Uh, but it's, and so we regularly reflect on, and it's all based on the customers' problems we're trying to solve. There's no point us creating great analytical solutions or platforms if no one wants to buy them. And we, re we realise that uh, make them, I've got some really great engineers and data scientists at the risk of building great things that no one actually wants to use because they're too complicated. So we have to actually reflect on really what is the, the customer looking for. Um, equally, when we talk to the customer, helping them understand, well, why do you want to do that yourself versus... Um, so it's, it's, it comes down to some frank conversations. Yeah and honest conversations. And the other thing that COVID did for us, we suddenly discovered that you don't have to create a lot of things. There's open source algorithms and so forth out there that we could have built progressively and it's a question of time versus, you know what, someone's really built some algorithms, we can actually adapt and we've adapted and now got a couple of products we're in, uh, trialing on some machines uh, to help with their productivity. And we would have been still there building it for the next two years. So it was, yeah. I suppose, COVID, we, you know, fairly virtual team, we connect remotely a lot, people work elsewhere, but they were just, they got curious, you know. Yeah. I think having to work remote got, got us curious, and we started looking for things, we found people in all parts of the world that were doing things that we were thinking about. So that mm. opened our eyes to, we don't have to do it ourselves, we can actually yeah. engage others, we can engage them virtually, which, and I'll just touch on the business model question, it's challenging some of the things around mining too, because I've got some people in the team that have never, or well, they've been to a mine site now, but they were finding things in the data that were challenging the people on site at the mine who were getting defensive, that how mm. could someone who's never been to a mine site see this in the data? And so that, that business model's also started, and the thinking started challenging, we're seeing things, and so we're now mapping 
the subject matter expertise of, say, mining with people who see things in the data and how you bring those two together. Yeah. And that's causing us to be more curious and continue to say, well, maybe we can't fix it, maybe someone with a subject matter expertise can, yeah. versus gee, you're seeing things we've never seen before in the data because you're looking at it a different way. And so that's causing that collaboration and an honest, and that actually starts open discussions, to be quite honest. It actually then gets people going, wow, you guys think differently. Yeah. And that allows discussion, allows people to explore, and it breaks down some of the barriers, yeah. and then people actually let people in for, to not always have to do it themselves. So yeah. that's what we're finding. And I, and I think that's a really a, a wonderful point and a really great word that you use in terms of curious. You know, so as leaders, can we stay curious? You know, can we build that curiosity in our teams? Um, because it's that curiosity that allows people the, the freedom or the interest, I guess, to go and say, well, who's done something like this before? Or, you know, why would somebody who hasn't been on a mine site come up with something like that? Okay, if I'm curious and I'm going to dig into that. And, you know, so it's, it's a great, um, I think, a great word for us to take and sort of go, well, how do we create that wonderful curiosity in our teams? Um, yeah, excellent. Thank okay, that's, you. That's our, one of my key words is pivot <laughs> and curiosity. They're my two key words. <laughs> Fantastic. Jerome, so how do... You personally, or as an organisation, how do, how do you think about identifying those capabilities that we're not good at, and then you know building them or reaching out um, and bringing them into the organisation so that we can move faster uh, towards this digital transformation? Um, <clears throat> a lot has been said already. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I think for us, it's uh, it's. Uh, I think our purpose is critical. Having a purpose as an organization and making sure that everybody is behind it. For us, is uh, harmonizing product, nature, and life, meaning uh, everything has a place at the, uh, uh, at the right time, uh, and making sure that the team is fully behind this concept, mm. uh, that they fully understand the concept, they understand what is the implication for our partners and customers, uh, is uh, 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 the, the starting point. From a partner perspective is, and you know that, it's an <laughs> education process also. Uh, because a lot of people don't necessarily understand where we're coming from and how we want to, to impact their own industry or how do we want to impact their own organization. So a lot of listening, yeah. a lot of discussions, a lot of sharing, uh, because we also believe that uh, innovation doesn't come from within. Mm. Innovation comes from the outside world, or the industries, or the people, or the companies. Um, and just a very genuine approach to how to do business. And if yeah. one day we decide that, well, the relationship is not where we want to be, be courageous to shake hands and say, yeah. let's take another attempt in another few years. And maybe the maturity of both our organization will, will find a, a, at this yeah. point in time. Yeah, and I think that's a that's another important point. I think uh, you know often in in business we we think about two organisations and forget that there are you know there are humans as part of that and and you know sometimes it, you, we can help build those relationships and we can help work with partners and and we should help build you know a partners capability and, and work and see how we can make things together. But then there are other times where you know things have changed. You know, digitisation will disintermediate certain activities, will disintermediate organisations, and we need to have that courage at some point to also say, okay, you know, this this is a point at which we, you know, we we walk or, or change paths. Um, yeah, no, that's a it's a very good point because you know, staying together sometimes in those relationships can can create just more and more tension. Uh, that uh, that isn't helpful. Um, so, Simon, if you could uh, if you could give the industry advice, or you are giving the industry advice here, um, what advice would you give the industry to move faster towards transforming uh, our digital uh, digital approach? Yeah, that's a good question because um, it's a long journey, yeah. um, and I don't think and and you know, blanket statement industry. Yeah. You know, the industry is exactly. made up of many, many different um, um, mining companies and um, other stakeholders that are at very different positions in their yeah. journey. 
with very, very different capabilities. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you can't just say, this is what you all need to do, because yeah. that would just be presumptuous and wrong. Yeah. Um, but I think, uh, just to generalize, um, really focus on your pain um, and really focus on quick wins, mm -hmm. like going back to agile, if, yep. you, if you can. Um, build credibility within your operational teams to deliver something of value um, so that they have a positive experience with it, mm. um, so that they're, they're not then tempted to fall back on, well, I knew it wouldn't work. Because, mm. um, you know, there has been a lot of false starts for technology in the mining industry over yeah. the last 20 years, and there are quite a few burnt players. Um, so, you know, recognize that and deliver mm. some value. Yep. Um, and, and deliver value to individual roles that can be actioned yeah. to make that person's job easier. Yeah, no, and a, a great point. I know a very hard question that I threw you, but, uh, you know, I think as, in, as an engineer, um, as engineers, we often get very excited about the technology and we focus in on the technology and forget that actually what we're really trying to do is solve valuable problems for people um, and change the way people do things uh, within our organisations to, to grab that value. So it's a great point. And uh, Joe, just a last couple of questions quickly. Quickly, how would you help focus on value? I think the, the, the complexity which, which we will add to the mining operations um, must not be underestimated. Um, if you think about sustainability, pulling in various power sources as opposed to only having had one before. If you think about um, electrification of your truck fleet, so all in a sudden you can't just drive around as you want because you have a trolley line or you have a charger. Um, I, I think we need to understand the only way to handle that complexity is through digitalization. Mm. Um, and in my view, this is where the main value is coming from, on top, of course, of, of getting a better handle on your operating conditions, on top of really understanding better, okay, where are my optimum points and all of that. Um, but I think the real challenge is really um, to make sure that you, you understand with what is coming at me, um, the only way is to go digital. And the sooner I start, maybe even with small steps, just to also for all of the culture change, for the organizational readiness which we discussed mm -hmm. here, the better. Um, because ultimately, um, miners will, in my view, will be overwhelmed by the complexity we will inevitably introduce um, if uh, they, they, they start too late in this journey. So, yeah. so I almost see this as a matter of getting prepared for what is inevitably coming at you. Mm -hmm. um, started it now, what, whatever you, 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 you think is, is, is the best way to get your organization thinking around these lines and then really expand fast. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, and, and I think, so thank you uh, very much to the, uh, the panel. I think you've again raised a number of really important points about building trust, about making sure we focus on value, starting those conversations, remembering that it's about people as much as it is about the technology, moving fast and, and you know, making those decisions and rapidly uh, going towards a collective um, uh, point uh, as being keys and, and those sorts of capabilities that we need to really double down on and not begin to build, but build on what we already have as an industry. So uh, thank you all very, very much. And thank you for uh, listening to the panel. And uh, if you could please thank the panel uh, for their time.